Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, my name is Charlotte and this is Charmed Asana. Uh, as you'll notice, I am sitting in front of my meditation area. Um, I am changing things up today. I am going to be filming where I said I wasn't going to. Um, it's just easier to do yoga on a hardwood floor, so I'll be in the kitchen today. And I just finished baking my bread for the week, so you'll get to see that. I'm going to proudly show that off. Um, Today we are going to do my directed study for my 200 hour yoga instructor course um, that I am very close to finishing. Um, and for the directed study I did a, um, I made a session for yoga for cyclists. So we're going to be focusing on um, the quadriceps, the hamstrings and the calf muscles, strengthening and stretching. Uh, those muscle groups specifically, um, but we're going to work on most of the body as yoga is very important to balance, right? Um, so that's the point of today. So it's leg day here at Charmed Asana and I hope you're looking forward to it. I do this whenever um, I am not going to be riding for a little bit, like I've been doing it more since uh, we have been asked to stay inside. I have been going for bike rides. I, it's very hard to stay inside when it's so nice out. Um, so coronavirus cannot catch me when I pedal too fast. <laughs> but on days that I do stay in, I am likely to do this particular session to keep my muscles strong and flexible um, for the purpose of cycling. So today's session, I'm going to ask you grab yourself another blanket like last time. Um, but I'm also going to suggest that you have um, a strap or a belt. If you don't have one of those cool yoga straps, grab a belt. Um, and also uh, yoga blocks or something that you can hold yourself up with. Um, these are just suggestions. You do not need to use them, but um, props are always helpful for yoga. So, um, oh, I also wanted to say I know that the last video was super quiet, so I'm going to do some experimenting with um, like narrating myself. So I'm going to do the yoga session and then I'll narrate and try and put that audio on top of the video file and hopefully that will work better. All right, so I'm gonna move myself into the kitchen. I'll take you with me and I'll see you in a second. Today we're going to start in a seated position on the floor. So let's start by rolling our shoulders forward and then reversing so that our shoulders roll backwards. And now we'll go ahead and we will lower our chin to our chest and just stretch out the back of our neck. And on your next inhale, tilt your head to the side so that you can start to stretch your trapezius muscle, which is that muscle on the side back of your neck. As I mentioned last time, this was where a lot of tension headaches come in. Um, this is where a lot of the tension headaches will originate from. So it's important to stretch this out daily, actually. And we'll return to center. And go over to the other side. And stretch out that side. and come back to center and let's lift our chin and we'll go ahead and stretch out the side of our neck now so lower your right ear to your right shoulder and we'll stretch out the, right, the left side of our neck and if you want you can very very gently pull your head slightly to, uh, to intensify that stretch do it very gently though your neck muscles are very um, 
very sensitive. And return to center as we inhale and then as we exhale we'll do it on the other side. So we will lower our left ear to our left shoulder to stretch out the right side of the neck. And again, if you would like to, you may tug slightly on the top of your head to intensify that stretch. But again, do it very gently. And then we'll go ahead, inhale, and lift the head. And now we'll do some spinal rotations. So place your hands on your kneecaps, on your knees, and we will start by rotating our spine uh, in a counterclockwise. So as you inhale, uh, pretend you're stirring a pot with your spine. That's kind of what we'll be doing. So as you um, start to rotate in a counterclockwise direction, let's just think a little bit about all the stress we've been holding on to. Uh, just start letting it go. Uh, get rid of all of it for the day. You don't need to worry about that right now. Remembering to breathe. And now whatever direction you're going, so you're going counterclockwise, start going clockwise. And start thinking about all the good things that have been going on in your life right now. I know it's very difficult right at this time. But think about all the good things that have happened um, despite everything. So in continuing to breathe as we rotate our spine in a clockwise direction, bringing those happy thoughts in. And then we'll go ahead and return so that we are seated straight and tall and we'll raise our arms up overhead. And as we exhale, lower the right hand to the floor and we will do a stretch on the left side. So reaching that other arm up and over your head. And as we're doing these side stretches in a seated pose, make sure that your sitting bones are still planted in the floor. So um, you can use your hand that is on the floor as leverage and push yourself back up into that um, seated position. And then on the next inhale, we'll go ahead and raise both of the arms and switch to the other side. So we will lower our left hand and stretch through the right side with keeping that right arm overhead. Again, using the left hand as a kickstand to keep our sitting bones planted in the floor. And one more breath. And we'll inhale the arms up overhead and exhale them to the floor. Now, let's raise them up overhead again. And we will twist to the right. So as we exhale, we're going to place our left hand on our right knee and take our right hand behind us and push ourselves into a seated stretch, excuse me, a seated spinal twist. And as we inhale, we lengthen our spine so we sit up a little bit taller and with every exhale we, tur uh, we turn just a little bit more. Let's do one more breath. Inhale, sit tall, exhale, twist. And as we inhale again, we'll bring the arms up overhead and twist to the left now. So, right hand comes to the left knee, left hand behind us, and we'll twist to the left. Inhaling, lengthening the spine, exhaling, twisting a little bit deeper. And one more breath, inhaling, sit a little taller, Exhale, twist just a slight bit more. And then on your next inhale, we'll return to center, bringing our hands up overhead. And we'll exhale the arms back to the floor. So from here, 
we will come around to tabletop. So we are going to uh, sit on our hands and knees and we will start the full session by doing some cat and cow. So as you inhale, lower your belly button towards the floor and look up to the sky if that's comfortable for your neck. And as you exhale, arch your spine round like a uh, startled cat. So, and go at your own breath, at your own pace. Inhaling for cow, dropping the stomach to the floor, and exhaling for cat as you arch your spine. And from here, we're going to return to tabletop, come back to a neutral spine, and we will reach our leg behind us. So let's take our right leg and lift it off the ground and keep it in a straight line, and we'll lift the opposite hand. So we will lift our left hand. So you should have your right leg off the ground and your uh, your left hand off the ground and try and uh, keep your spine in a straight line. Um, we're going to just reach so you can reach by pointing your toes or you can jet your your heel back like you're doing a karate kick but the point is here to do some spinal extensions so really stretch through your spine and we'll return to tabletop and let's do the other side so we'll raise our left leg and our right hand and we'll just stretch through our spine just reaching through our hand reaching back through our foot either pointing the toe or jetting our heel like a karate kick and return to tabletop and we'll do it one more time on each side so let's raise the right leg and the left hand and try and reach just a little further, just really reach. And exhale your hand and leg back to tabletop. And we'll do one more time on the other side. So lift your left leg and your right hand and stretch. Just reach a little further than last time. Really stretch. And exhale, return everything to tabletop. So let's start um, doing some half moon, kneeling half moon poses. Um, so to do kneeling half moon, uh, we will start by raising our right leg and we will place the heel so that it is. Um, down behind us over the left foot as you see in the video here and now we will rotate so that our chest is facing the same way that our foot is pointing and start to look that direction as well this might throw your balance off but that's all right this is just a little bit of warm-up balance and from here you can raise that right hand into the air and if you want the additional challenge you can see if you can balance on your one knee and hand on the left side by raising that right foot into the air this is quite challenging all right great so let's return everything back to tabletop and repeat on the left side so we will turn to the left so we will kick our left foot back and do the same thing by rotating that hip out planting the left foot down on the floor again balancing on our right leg and start to rotate our chest to the left and once you're ready you can turn your head to look that way as well and then lift your hand into the air and if you would like the additional challenge, now you can lift that left leg into the air for an additional balance challenge. Remember to breathe here. Excellent. So let's 
come back to tabletop. Exhale everything back down to tabletop. And on our next inhale, we will lift our hips and push back into down dog. So this is where things will start to get a little bit more challenging. We are going to start working those quadriceps and our hamstrings and our calf muscles. This is the beginning of leg day, starting with down dog. But from down dog, we are going to raise our right leg into the air for a three-legged dog and bring it forward to the front of the mat, planting that foot. And we will also plant the back heel, the back left heel. And as we inhale, we will rise up into warrior one, keeping our arms stretched up overhead. And if you would like, you can do a slight back bend through here by reaching your hands up and behind the back of your head to arch your back. And on your next exhale, we will bring our hands back down to the floor and step back into plank. And here we will exhale as we lower down, keeping our elbows close to our sides for chaturanga or down plank. And as we inhale for up dog, exhale for down dog. And we will do this on the left side. So let's lift our left leg for three-legged dog on the left side. Bring that leg forward. Plant the foot at the front of the mat. And plant the back heel down as well. As we inhale, we'll come up into warrior one. And again, here you can... Reach back for an extra back bend if you so choose. On your next exhale, bring your hands back down to the mat and step back into a plank. Exhale down for chaturanga for your down plank. Inhale for up dog. Exhale for down dog. And we're going to start bringing even more motion now. So... Lift the right leg again for a three-legged dog and plant the foot forward at the front of the mat. Come up again into your warrior one. Doing a back bend if you so choose. And as we exhale, we are going to rotate that back foot out so that the toes are pointed to the edges of the mat. And we are going to sink a little bit deeper and bring our hands so that they form a T position for warrior two. Feeling very strong, very powerful here. And on your next inhale, raise the hands again and come back into warrior one. Exhale, bring your hands down to the mat and step back into your up plank. Exhale for chaturanga, down plank. Inhale for up dog. Exhale for down dog. If it gets to the point where this is too much for you, these chaturangas are very challenging, um, please feel free to skip the chaturangas, the planks, and come to down dog um, automatically. Now, I will let you know now, we are going to be doing some more plank positions in the near future, so um, don't wear yourself out at the beginning. All right, let's do this again on the left side now. So, lift that left leg. Plant the left foot at the front of the mat and come back up into your warrior one on this side. Bring your hands to that T position. Rotate your foot to the outer edges of the mat and sink into your warrior two. Feel very strong through here. Inhale, back up into warrior one. Exhale, 
either straight into down dog or you can come with me and we'll go through the chaturanga. So up plank, chaturanga, your down plank, and as you inhale, come into your up dog. Exhale for down dog. And actually, why don't we come back down to our hands and knees for a moment before we do the full sequence that I have for us today. Let's sink back into our child's pose and just take a breather. Let our hands and arms relax for a moment. They've been working very hard. So just breathe through here. Just relax your arms. They have a little bit more work to do. And on your next inhale, let's come up, back up into our down dog, and we'll do the full sequence. So let's start on the right side. Lift your right leg, bring it forward, and come up into your warrior one. Rotate the arms so that they're in the T-shaped position. And make sure that they are level with one another as you stand in your warrior two. And from here, we are going to drop that back hand so um, to our back leg and raise the front arm into the air. And if it's comfortable for your neck, you can look up at that hand. Um, but if it, it causes you any uh, discomfort, please don't look up at your hand. And this is reverse warrior. And we'll return to warrior two briefly before we bend that front arm and place it on our bent knee up on the front. And we will raise the back hand up overhead and reach forward for extended side angle to get a stretch through that side. Really enjoying that stretch through here. Reach through your pinky and your hand all the way down through the pinky of your toe. And on your next inhale, we will return to warrior two and straighten that front knee. Pretend somebody has grabbed your front hand and is pulling you forward um, until you can be pull forward no more and then you will bend at the hips and come into triangle. You can either grab your pant leg or your ankle or if you are able to you can come and place your hand at the floor. This is where you could actually use a block to raise the floor to you. And from triangle, we are going to bend that front knee and cartwheel that other hand down to meet um, the mat. And we will step back into up plank or straight to down dog if you so choose. But if you would like the challenge, let's come down to chaturanga. Inhale for up dog. Exhale for down dog. And we have one more and we'll do it on the left now. So let's start by raising our left leg up for a three-legged dog. Raise it and plant it forward. Come up into your warrior one. Inhaling here. Come into warrior two by rotating your arms out into that T shape. And then we will drop that back hand to the back leg and raise the front hand up into the sky for reverse warrior on the left side. Return to warrior two for a brief moment before we bend that front, hand, uh, front elbow and place it on the front uh, knee. And we will reach that back hand up and over our heads for extended side angle on the left. Again, reaching through here. Return to your warrior two. 
straighten that front leg. Pretend someone has taken a hold of your front hand and is pulling you forward until you can reach no further, where you will then bend at the waist and come into triangle. Again, you can use a block if that's helpful for you. And from here, we will cartwheel that other hand down to meet the mat and step back into either down dog or into up plank. And we will exhale for chaturanga. Inhale for up dog. Exhale for down dog. And now let's come to our hands and knees again and sit back for child's pose. Excellent work. That was very challenging. I'm very proud of you. But I hate to tell you this, we are not done with planks. As I mentioned before, we are going to come back into some plank poses. Um, I do want to mention here, I should have said it before, but if you know that you have wrist pro uh, troubles, um, you should be very careful if you do plank pose at all. Um, if it hurts, please do not do plank. Uh, listen to your body. It's very important in yoga to listen to our bodies. Let's go ahead, come back up to tabletop, and we will come into plank pose, and we're going to hold this for a couple of breaths. And in plank, we want our spine to be in a straight line, and we also want our bottoms to not be sagging, not be raised at all. They, it needs to be a straight line. So if you need some help, look at the video. And that's how it should look, just about. So continue breathing. Deep breathing. And on your next exhale, come back into tabletop and push back into child's pose. Excellent. Wonderful job. Just relax here for a moment. And on your next inhale, come back up into tabletop and push back into plank. And this time we are going to rotate our, um, our body weight into our right hand. And we're going to shift into a side plank. And there are a couple different ways that we can do this. Side plank, you can keep your ankles stacked on top of one another. You can put your foot, the top foot in front of the bottom foot. Or you can bend your knee and help steady yourself to hold yourself up that way. Um, but the important thing here is that your shoulders are stacked in a straight line. And we will raise our left hand up into the air for side plank on the right arm. This is very challenging. Well done. Okay, exhale and come back to plank. And you can either come into down dog as a resting pose, or you can come to your hands and knees and take child's pose again. And we'll just breathe for a moment. It's very challenging, I know. You're doing a wonderful job. Okay, let's come back into tabletop if you're in child's pose, and we will come into plank, and we'll shift all of our weight into our left hand and rotate the body to face the right side. Stacking our shoulders putting our ankles on top of one another, or if you would like, you can bend your knee and put your foot on the floor for some assistance. And let's all come down to tabletop and push back into child's pose again. From child's pose, we'll come back up into tabletop and lift our hips for down dog. And from here, I would like for you to try and hop forward and place our feet on the front of the mat in yogi squat. So we're going to come into a squatted position and I will rotate my body so you can see how it is supposed to look from the front. Um, see if you can get your heels on the floor. If you can't, that's perfectly all right. Do, you do not want to strain your Achilles tendon here. And on your next inhale, we will raise our arms up overhead as we inhale and come up to standing. Wonderful. Okay, so we are going to move into some balancing poses. 
Let's start off easy. So we're going to start by just lifting both of our arms up over our heads as you raise your right leg and bend it at the knee. Hold it for a couple of breaths. And exhale as we bring the foot back to the floor and arms down to our sides again. And we'll do the same thing on the left. As you inhale, raise your arms overhead and raise your left leg, keeping it bent at the knee. We're just playing around with our balance here. As cyclists, I'm sure we're not having too much trouble right now, but if you are, that's all right. Our balance varies from day to day. All right, so exhale and return everything to the floor, arms to the sides. Let's add a little bit more of a challenge now. So we're going to repeat the first bit. So we'll inhale, bring both of our arms up over our heads, raise the right leg as we do. Steady ourselves and now we will go ahead and lower our arms to grab a hold of our lifted knee and just see how that affects our balance. and exhale everything to the floor. And we'll repeat on the left side. Inhale the arms up overhead, bring the left knee up, steady yourself and lower both arms so you can grab a hold of your lifted knee. It's important here as we're balancing to focus on something that's our drishti, our gaze. And exhale and return your foot to the mat. Now, let's do the same thing again. We'll raise our arms up overhead, bring our right knee up. Steady ourselves, And then we'll grab a hold of that knee again. And now let's raise our right hand up overhead and just hold that knee with your left hand. And see how that feels. If you want for an additional challenge, you can try and turn your head to look up at that lifted hand. Don't just uh, swivel your eyeballs up at it. Actually turn your, your, your chin up too. Look at that hand. Good. Okay, so now let's return our foot to the mat and we will do it again on the other side. So, inhale the arms up, left knee comes up, steady yourself, and then we'll reach down, grab our knee for a breath, and now Keeping your right hand on your knee, lift your left hand up into the air and see how long you can hold this. And if you want, you can do the same thing on this side where we turned our head to look up at our hand that is lifted overhead. Very good. Okay, let's return everything, put our foot down back on the mat. We'll return to our mountain pose. And here, this is where I want you to pay attention to how your knees uh, move as you bend your knees. Um, if they are knocking into one another or going out, you need to adjust your feet so that your knees are going to go straight forward. Because we are going to come into chair pose. And by the end of the session, you are probably going to actually really hate me and probably never watch another video from me again. So, <laughs> so adjust your feet as you need. And inhale the arms up overhead. And as you exhale, sink down into that invisible chair behind you. And it really is easier as you sink lower. Really breathing in this pose. This is another challenging pose. 
Good. All right, inhale. And come back up to standing. Good. Okay. Now, return to chair pose. So we're going to inhale, arms overhead. Exhale to sink down into that chair. And we're going to start bouncing. So we'll bounce 40 times in chair pose. And it's going to feel like you're climbing a hill on your bike. So, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, halfway, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Sink. Really hold on to that chair pose for just a couple more breaths. And inhale and return to your mountain pose. Phew, man, I'm sure you can feel your heart beating really quite quickly through your chest right now. I know this really gets my heart rate going. Very well done. Okay, one more chair pose, I promise. This is some chair pose with um, a bit of balance thrown in. So, sink back down, uh, excuse me, raise your arms up overhead and sink as you exhale into your chair pose. And we're going to shift our weight into our right foot and see if you can just lift your left foot off of the floor as you balance in chair pose. If you think you can do it, you can lift so that you um, put your left leg, over, cross it over your right that you are balancing on. Good. Well done. Okay, let's come out of chair pose before we really tire ourselves out. Let's stand up for a second. Just maybe wiggle your, your legs around, shake them out. Come back to your mountain. Exhale back into your chair pose. And now let's shift our weight into our left foot. And see if you can balance on your left foot by lifting your right. And if you want, you can see if you can cross that right leg over the left for a balancing chair. Very well done. Okay, let's, again, we'll come out of chair pose and come back to standing. And now that's the end of leg day. We are going to start cooling down. I can hear the collective sigh of relief. <laughs> All right. So before we get started and come down to the mat, uh, I want you to go ahead and get your props handy. So if you have a blanket, grab that. If you have your blocks, make sure they're close by. Um, and your strap you'll need as well, or your belt if you don't have a strap. So with those at close at hand, we're going to inhale, reach the arms up overhead, exhale as you fold at the hips and come into standing forward fold, inhale to place your hands on your shins and to flat back, exhale for forward fold and plant your hands on the mat, and we'll just step straight back into down dog. Let's not do another plank tonight. I think we're done with that. Um, <laughs> so in down dog, let's grab our blankets and place it uh, rough, a little bit back from our hands. We're going to come and nestle down on it. And that is absolutely a pun, and you will, you'll see in a moment. You can probably guess where we're going. So let's lift our right leg into the air for a three-legged dog, and we will bend at the knee and sweep that leg forward and come down onto our backside, leaving our left leg behind us for pigeon pose. I really enjoy this pose. It gives such a wonderful stretch through the back of your leg, in your gluteal muscles, and into your hamstrings. So I am going to go quiet, and I just want you to go ahead and hang out in this pose for about a minute, um, and just enjoy the stretch.
And if you want, you can either come to just balance on your, hold yourself up with your hands, or you can come down onto your elbows, or maybe you can make it all the way down to the ground. Just about 10 more seconds. Good. And inhale and uh, curl that back foot. Put your toes on the mat and lift yourself back up into down dog. I know it's a little bit awkward getting back there, but see what you can do. And we'll hang out in down dog for uh, a couple of breaths before we do it again on the left side. Alright, so we'll lift our left leg into the air for three-legged dog and swing it forward by bending the knee and placing our um, buttocks on the blanket and nestle into pigeon pose on the left. And again, I'll go quiet for about a minute, but see where you can fold forward if you can only hold yourself up on your hands, that's fine. If you want to come to your elbows, that's great. And maybe you can come all the way down to the ground. Just listen to what your muscles are saying. If they're screaming, then you might need to come up. All right, so let's see if you can hold it for another 45 seconds. Just 10 more seconds. And on your next inhale, push yourself back up and curl the toes at the back and step back into down dog. So from here, we'll just come straight down to our knees and grab your blocks. You will probably want something to hold yourself up um, unless you are very flexible like you were a gymnast in the past or a dancer or something. Um, we're going to do some splits. So have one block on either side of you that you can hold yourself up with. It doesn't matter what height it's at. Um, if you're more tense in your hamstrings, it'll probably need to be rather high, and that's all right. We're all different amounts of flexible. So let's start by bringing our right foot forward, leaving our left knee on the mat or on the blanket. Um, you want to be on the blanket for this. this. It will cushion your knee a little bit. And we'll just... Holding ourselves up on our, uh, on our blocks, we will start to slide that right foot forward and go as low as you can. I am not terribly flexible back there, so this is about as good as it gets for me. And that's all right. Um, you, maybe you can get a little bit further, and that's amazing. I applaud you if you can get even further down than I can. And we'll just hold this for another 30 seconds since I've been rambling on for a little bit. Remembering to breathe through here. It's very important that you remember to breathe, especially in these difficult poses. Just 10 seconds more. All right. And on your next inhale, see if you can come up and swing that right leg to meet the left knee. And uh, we will start on the other side. So we'll bring our left foot out in front and do the same thing. We'll just hold ourselves up and slide our left foot forward and come into as good of a split as we possibly can. It might be different on this side. Maybe you can't get down as low, and that's all right.
Ten more seconds. Hang in there. Okay, now as you inhale, bring yourself back up and try and wiggle that foot back to meet the right leg. Very well done. All right, so let's just come and sit down on our backside. Just sit down with our feet out in front of us. And as we inhale, we will raise our arms up overhead and hinge at the waist. And see if you can reach your hand, the uh, hands to the feet. Uh, um, there's also another way that you can come down to seated forward fold, and that's by starting with your knees bent and grabbing your feet there, and then start to lower your knees to the mat and see how far you can get them to be straight. This will stretch out our lower back muscles as well as the back of our legs. And this will feel very good, especially if you've been sitting for a long period of time. Just 10 more seconds. Just hold on. This is all very important to do stretching after all of the strengthening that we did. All right, now release and come back to seated. And we'll go ahead and lie down. So now you know we're really winding down for our session. Let's do a brief inversion. So bring your feet to the mat uh, by bending your knees and place them hip width distance apart, not too far from your gluteal muscles. And as we inhale, oh, and keep your keep your hands close to your side. And um, as we inhale, we will lift our hips into the air for a, a bridge pose. And exhaling as we return to the mat. We'll do it a couple more times just so that we get that inversion in. So inhale as you lift your hips into the air. Maybe bringing your hands behind your back and clasping them together. Just to bring that bridge up a little higher. And exhaling to release and return to the mat. And one more time, see if you can come up as high as you can uh, within reason. So inhale, lifting the hips, pushing yourself a little bit further, and exhaling as you return to the mat. And we have one more leg stretch, so grab that strap or your belt and unroll it. There are a couple different ways that you can put this strap around your foot. So we're going to start with the right foot. So let's place our strap on the ball of our big toe. Um, please do not place this up on your arch of your foot. It, I think it will actually cause some more problems than if you put it on the ball of your foot. So with the strap on the ball of your big toe, um, lift your foot up into the air and we're going to do some reclined splits. This will stretch out our Achilles tendon as well as our calf muscle. And again, the other way you can do this is by folding it like a Roman sandal. So you cross it as an X behind your calf and grab it that way. And since I've been rambling again, we'll just hold it for another 30 seconds. Just 10 more seconds. Now 
take the strap in both, or take both parts of the strap in your right hand and lower your right foot down to the floor, uh, to the side, to open up that hip. And then we'll bring it back up to center. Take the strap in the left hand and we'll lower our foot to the left to stretch through those muscles. And again, return to center. And we will take the strap off of our foot and lower our foot to the mat, leaving it straight out in front of us. It will probably feel like uh, your leg that you just stretched out is a little bit longer than the other. All right, so we'll do it on the left side now. So do that again. Again, placing that strap on the ball of your foot. And you can do the Roman sandal if you wish, or you can just leave it as it is. And we'll lift our left foot up and stretch through the back of our leg here. Now take that strap in the left hand and lower your leg to the side, down to the left side for a hip opener. And then we'll go ahead and lift it back up to center and put the strap in the right hand and bring our left foot over to the right side. Good. Now let's bring it all back up to the center and we'll take our strap off of our foot and place our foot back down on the ground. And this is where I will leave you off and I'll let you set up for Shavasana. So thank you so much for joining me today. I know it was a long one, um, but that was the requirement. I needed to make a full session for Yoga for Cyclists as part of my directed study. And I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, this is something that I use to keep my legs strong and flexible. Um, I also want to apologize for any of the weird noises that uh, I picked up uh, <laughs> on the audio, but at least you could actually hear me this time, right? Um, I do know that I probably picked up um, some of the people across the way leaving as they slammed their door shut. Um, I know that for a fact. <laughs> and um, so as you set up for Shavasana, remember this is a very important part of our yoga practice to uh, absorb all of the wonderful stretching and strengthening that we just did. Um, I will go ahead and chime you in, but um, please consider leaving a like. Maybe um, let me know whether you liked the audio, uh, if this works better. Um, Anything that I, else that I can change? I know that it looks like the lighting was still pretty bad, and I do apologize for that. There's, there's not a whole lot I can do again. Um, and if you preferred me being in the kitchen as opposed to trying to do all of that on the carpet, uh, that would be helpful. So I will go ahead and chime you into your Shavasana. And... Um, Thank you very much again for joining me today. I hope that you remain happy and healthy in this trying time that we are still in um, with the coronavirus, and uh, I hope that it passes very quickly and it doesn't affect you. So, namaste, and I will go ahead and chime you in for your shavasana.